Hi, this is Karen O'Brien, and I want to cover a, how to update a training module into a new geo package. So you can see that I have this data that was created in 2021, and I have the geo package file right here, uh, Tailings Dam Module 7, right? So I've already put this on my computer, and I've popped it into Flow2D Pro documentation, example projects, advanced modules. I just had to make this folder myself because it's not in there. Module 7, and it's just this. So I'm going to delete these two since obviously I, I've already done this. So I'm just trying to get a decent video to show the process. So if you try to open this, you're going to get a whole bunch of error messages about missing tables because this is an old geo package. And I just want to show you what you should see when you're trying to load old data. You can see that you're going to get a bunch of these because we've put a lot of new data layers into and data tables into the system and of course you're uh, because there's so much data that's missing or so many tables that are not in that geo package you don't have the uh, these widgets and stuff are not going to load because flow2d plugin didn't load so instead we will open a clean geo package oh by the way when you do that note your coordinate system Rem remember your coordinate system write it down whatever you need to do then we'll open a clean QGIS and we'll get a blank map and you can either import something from your project that sets your coordinate system like a, a, a project domain or elevation or whatever you want and that'll set your project uh, coordinate system or you can come in here and you can just set it from here. I've already done this so I know my coordinate system and then uh, that this is the important part you go here to important part number one is you have to rebuild a blank geo package. So I'm just going to put that in here, but I'm going to name it a little differently. So this is 10 underscore 66. That's the version of the plugin I'm using. So that'll let me know what, uh, how the, or what format this geo package is in. Set the geo, uh, the coordinate system, and it's the first on the list because I just used it. And then click OK. And then you can see here that a new geo package is loaded, but there's no data in it yet. Now, this is important step number two. We need to import from the previous geo package. So from the old geo package, that's just this guy right here. Click open and it's going to load the project for you. Now, obviously, the bigger and more complicated the project is, the longer that's going to take. So don't be afraid to just wait for it. And now this project is ready to go. So lately, because we are getting a lot more layers and a lot of extra data we don't need, we haven't quite figured out in the code how to group these, how to subgroup these layers. So I'm going to go ahead and group this stuff by selecting like groups, right clicking and hitting the G key or coming down here and clicking group selected. And then I'll just name that boundary. I'm going to do that for channels as well. So I've got my channel data right here. and then I'll do it for storm drain oops group and I will also do it for the data that I'm not going to use so I don't need a lot of this data I don't need um, street lines I don't really need roughness because I have an external polygon that I can use to set up the roughness I don't think I need reservoirs in this one but it is a tailings dam it is a tam breach so you could keep reservoirs in blocked areas. I don't have any buildings in this one so I can take that off. I'm not going to use infiltration in this one so I can select those. I don't have rain arf areas. I, I might use tolerance in this one but I and I might use fruit areas. So the rest of these if I'm not going to use them I absolutely know that I'm not going to use them. I can right click G and put those in not used and then that needs to stay in the user group but we can put it to the bottom and then close it so now that cleans this up a bit I'm going to do the same thing to my tables down here that I'm not going to use so I'm not going to use storm drain tables infiltration tables calibration tables evaporation tables channel tables or multiple channel tables I just right click that and I will group it into not used tables and then I want to put that D 
down at the bottom but keep it in. I don't put it down all the way to the bottom. Keep it in the, hang on, it's got a, it's, it's real uh, touchy, so get it. Keep it in the Flow2D uh, group. So if you close the Flow2D group, you want everything to be in there. And uh, if it's not, you just, again, it's just a little touchy, so you kind of got it perfectly get it in there. And of course, um, external data that you want to add, you're going to have to pull back in, such as elevation or maybe some polygons or, or other shape files that represent data. You're going to have to pull that back in. Then you'll have to save it. And this is the same kind of process. You're going to save it. Oops, yeah, that was not a, that was wrong. This goes to Advanced Modules, Module 7, and it's the same thing here, except we go 10. 66 six because that's the number of my plugin. Sorry, that should have been shift. I did the wrong button and save that. And now I can get rid of this or what I like to do with this is rather than get rid of it, I just make a zip it. And let's go ahead and just make a file a folder called backups and pop that into backups. Put that in there too. And then I don't need this anymore, so I can just delete it. And one final step, I'll just close this. And then if I double click this G QGZ file, I just want to show you that it will load right back up. And this process works really well. I've tested it on almost every kind of project we have, so I know that it's really stable and functional. And it's a great method for you to get your project into a new version of QGIS so that you can use the new tools that we've developed over the past year. So I appreciate you uh, trying out this system and giving me feedback if you have any, or if you get stuck, you can send me an email, karen at flow-2d.com, and get some help.